what is today considered to be the earliest archaeological industry of mankind. Its age is defined as two and a half million years. The term Oldowan is taken from the site of Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania where the first Oldowan lithics were discovered. The Oldowan tools were used by ancient humans, Homo habilis, Homo rugofensis, and early Homo ergaster. In a later period, the old device stone tool industry was picked up by both Homo erectus and the later species Homo florencianus, whose remains were found in Indonesia on the island of Flores. The older one industry was spread in many places in Africa, from Algeria in the north to the territory of the modern South African Republic in the south, from the coast of the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean. The older one tools were found also outside of Africa. Artifacts were discovered from Spain and the Caucasus to India and China. We know few about the hominin species who created and used older one tools. It is supposed that they did not know how to make fire themselves and had no clothing. They lived in caves or built some sort of shelters made of stones to protect themselves from wind and animals. Such mounds of stones could be covered with animal hide as a roof. The older one tools. Chopper. These early tools were simple. The pebble was struck with another stone a certain angle. One or a few flakes were chipped off from it. The cutting edge was created by several chips produced from the same side. It had an irregular shape. The rest of the pebble was left untreated and served as a handle. Such simple tools chipped from one side are also called mode one. Usually the chopper had a size from 7 to 10 centimeters. The flake could also be used as a tool for cutting animal flesh. Sometimes it is impossible to distinguish whether a chopper is made by human or it originated from natural causes. For example, in excavations in Yakusha during Uriac, they still cannot determine the origin of objects resembling a chopper. I observed these excavations only on the photos, but in my opinion this place has no rocks, neither in the landscape nor in the soil. It is not known for sure, but some suppose that even Australopithecus could use choppers. Perhaps these choppers were of natural origin. And these tools became part of their life so that the later species Homo habilis was already able to make a chopper artificially. The next tool, which is also called Mode 2, is worked by facially. The stone is chipped from two opposite sides. So, from a chopper it was easy to do the Mode 2 stone tool. Such by facially worked tools belong to the late older one. Later appeared more sophisticated tool, the so-called hand axe. The hand axe is also chopped from two sides, but it has a triangular shape. The most common hand axes have a pointed end and rounded base. Despite the fact that two-faced tools and hand axes have already emerged, the simple choppers remain ubiquitous until the end of the Stone Age. Especially in those regions where was no other raw material except pebbles. For example, the Tasmanians made choppers up to the 19th century. At the same time with the late period of Older One, there emerged the Aculean stone industry. It was founded by the middle and late Homo ergaster, and Homo erectus continued its development. It is thought that Aculean technologies first appeared about one and a half million years ago, and lasted until as late as 130,000 years ago. The initial phase of the Aculean industry is known as the Abivillian industry. In Eurasia, the Aculean is replaced by the Mysterian industry that belongs to the Neanderthals and in Africa by the Sangoan industry. It's amazing that when Homo ergaster and Homo erectus went from Africa and spread in Europe and Asia, both could carry different stone technologies. For example, Homo florensiensis, although they belonged to the late Homo erectus, used the older one tools, more primitive than the Aculean one. In Yakutia during Yerjik were found stone tools which were also assigned to the older one, although it is not yet clear whether they are artifacts in general or whether these stones are of natural origin.
A distinctive artifact of the Aculean industry is the hand axe, whose manufacture is more complicated than ordinary choppers. Hand axe was made double-sided by 30 or more targeted strokes. The maximum size of the article was 20 centimeters, and the weight was up to 2.5 kilograms. Tool types found in Aculean assemblages include also cleavers, retouched flakes, scrapers, and segmental chopping tools. The Aculean hand axes could be pointed, cordate, ovate, fikram, and baku. Presumably, the late Homo ergaster users of the Aculean tools knew how to make fire using stones. Probably, men learned to make fire during the stone working, in which a spark accidentally fell on dry grass. So, people of the Aculean industry could strengthen and sharpen their spears by charring them over a fire. Fire was used to fry meat for heating to protect from predatory animals. Possessing fire, Aculean people could settle inside the caves, providing themselves with light and heating. The art of making fire allowed people to live in the colder northern regions. Homo erectus spread on the earth. The people of the older one lived mainly in caves or built nests on trees. People using the Aculean industry could build dwellings similar to the proposed building in Terramata, Nice, France. This building, according to our reconstruction, could be covered with animal hides, like the hide teepees of the prairie Indians. Or in the case of tight laying of poles on the ridge, the walls could be covered with clay. So we conclude that the old one industry that originated in Africa two and a half million years ago was a foundation for the development of the Aculean industry which spread from Africa to southern Europe and Asia. The users of these industries, Homo erectus and Homo ergaster, spread throughout Eurasia. Their descendants will develop into diverse populations even before the appearance of the Homo heidelbergensis. Some researchers consider Neanderthals to be romantic. Others describe Neanderthals as bloodthirsty savages. Still others accuse both of them of extremes, characterizing the primitive man as something average. Based on observations of animals, I can assume that already at the level of Ergaster and Erectus, people were quite different from each other in behavior and in temper. For example, cats and dogs, raised in the same conditions, vary in temper from kind and compliant to aggressive. In Africa a researcher was attacked by a chimpanzee. However, another ape from the same herd tried to protect the man, as evidenced by the video. I think that already during this period, the first people could unite by mutual sympathy or by the level of submission. Perhaps in some groups was formed a patriarchal system with an alpha male at the head while others had equal rights. So appeared the first difference between human communities. As for the language of the first people, judging by their place of articulation, the first sounds were the vowels. Uh, oh, oh. These sounds were made primarily to attract attention. Sign language was more like a pantomime, which contributed to the development of facial expressions and first artistic abilities. Then, to the primary language, added first consonants, such as M, B, K And the sign language improved and unified So our acquaintance with the very first human industries comes to the end Subscribe to the channel It was Crow Wind and the creative team of the Croker S. Indian Mennonite Church uh -huh.